this is a fear that some people have that they will need to overcome. Now, our fears often lead to aggressive behavior. Uh, we often, whenever we see ourselves becoming aggressive, we may ask ourselves, what are we fearing in this case? What is the fear that's causing us to be aggressive? And the other situation that our fears lead us to is to panic. So fear in its extreme expression can become aggressiveness or it can become panic. Uh, neither of these situations help us. We are out of control in both situations. We are not functioning from our higher self, but rather from our ego. And we will definitely want to overcome both aggressiveness and panic. Our fears can also cause us to become attached to others and fearful to, to lose them. And this attachment can be unpleasant for ourselves and for them. The more attached we are, the more we burden the other with our attachment and the less free we are to be who we want to be because we keep altering ourselves in order to be who the other wants us to be or we need to control the other in various ways. So every fear is a closed door in our lives. It's a, something that we cannot enjoy. It's, a, it's an obstacle. Every time I fear something, I'm obstructed from approaching it or doing something that I might benefit from or enjoy. So every fear is a closed door and each of us will have to see how many closed doors do we have in our life which are preventing us from enjoying life. Now there are two kinds of people. There are people who fear and just stop when they fear, do not approach what they fear. And then there are people who, although they fear, continue. Everyone fears to some degree, perhaps more or less. But what we need to do is to, I mean, we, if we wait for our fears to completely disappear before we begin to proceed there where we fear, it might that be a relationship or work or flying on an airplane or making a change in our lives, if, change in our job or whatever it may be. The key is not so much being totally free from fear, but continuing even though we fear. And I call this living parallel to our fear or parallel with our fear. So perhaps it's time to open a few of these doors, a few of these uh, obstacles to proceeding in our lives that could be spiritually or economically or professionally or in our relationships, whatever it may be. It's time to open a few doors. Now, part two. What can we do to move forward? How can we begin to open some of these doors and proceed without fear and manifest greater happiness, greater productivity, creativity, and a more beautiful life. The first thing that we need to do is to realize that it's natural to fear, it's a part of the human experience, and that to love and accept and respect ourselves even though we fear, and realize that we deserve other people's love and respect even when we fear. But we benefit, however, becoming free from that fear. So I call this living parallel with the fear. Imagine that you are an adult and that you're walking with your child who is fearing by your side. So separate yourself from the fear. Your fear is, say, for example, your inner child. And continue walking. Continue moving forward. Holding your fear's hand. Comforting your fear. You are the adult. The fear is the child, and you are moving forward in your life, holding your fear's hand, and discussing and explaining the truth of reality to your fear. The 
second thing that we can do is to begin to employ various forms of energy psychology, which we will discuss later on, um, in which we can remove the emotional charge established in the energy and emotional body from some previous emotional experience. Here we see what is called the fast track reaction, that is, we see a dog, we have been bitten by a dog, and we this creates an emotional reaction of fear, perhaps heart beating fast, is to run the f f fly, flee or fight uh, syndrome. And we either have to fight or run, and that, that creates an anxiety in the body that does not pass through the conscious perception, so our, through our cerebral cortex. It's not something that's analyzed by the brain which creates fear. It's an automatic reaction. These automatic energy, emotional reactions, or emotional energized reactions, can be dealt with with EFT, TAT, BSFF, WHEE, Sedona, and other forms. I'm sure there are many other forms out there now that are appearing every day. So we can work on our fears through emotional uh, energy psychology. Another thing that we can do to overcome our fears is to discuss them with a professional, with someone who can help us, who can understand us, accept and love us as we are, and help us develop a programming for overcoming these fears. So just sharing the fact, just exposing the fear, bringing it up to the surface is healing to some degree rather than keeping it held inside and being shameful and feeling self-rejection or fearing other people knowing. Of course, we want to do this with the people that can really help us in this situation. And often, um, even more healing is to work in a group, and especially a group of people with a similar problem, people with similar fears. And that supports us, and one supports the other, and we can set goals, and then we get uh, the support of the other in those goals. And we remember the group throughout the week. And so these kinds of meetings with a professional, could be a psychologist, psychiatrist, an EFT practitioner, energy psychology practitioner, uh, psychotherapist, or with a group, usually with a facilitator can be very healing and encouraging to overcoming our fears. Gradually, however, we will need to approach our fear. That is to begin to come in gradual contact. It could be, say we were afraid of a dog, we could be a hundred meters away and then 50 and then 25 and then get closer. If we're fear of the, afraid of the sea, we can go and just put our ankles in the water and then our knees and gradually approach. If we're afraid of heights, we can start at the first or second step of a ladder and then gradually move up and work on breathing and relaxing as we gradually approach what we fear. Now, there are things that we cannot approach physically and we will need to approach mentally. For example, we can't buy an airplane ticket every week and just get on the plane and then leave it before it takes off it would be quite expensive and confusing to the airplane people, to the airlines. But we can imagine ourselves getting on the plane, feeling safe, taking off, being up in the air, feeling safe, feeling relaxed, and then coming down, landing. So we can also approach what we fear mentally by visualizing ourselves in contact with that and feeling safe and comfortable. That is, we are changing our programming in relationship to this. And this positive projection is a good way to complete any form of energy psychology, such as EFT or TAT or BSFF. That is, removing the negative charge and then finishing off with a positive perception. Now, EFT, it's easy. Everyone can learn it, even a little child. 
and you can see the basic points here which we will discuss in more detail later on at the end of the presentation. Here you can see the head points, top of the head, eyebrow, side of the eye, under the eye, above the lips, below the lips, the basic face points for tapping. Now before we get into the tapping procedure, let's discuss some other factors that will help remove fear. Um, it's very, our food can play a role. That is, uh, it's important to um, avoid any kind of sugar or too many sweets. They can weaken the nervous system. And it's important to strengthen the nervous system with healthy food. And if that's the not enough, vitamin B complex. It's been shown that vitamin B complex can help people overcome fear so they, by strengthening and relaxing the nervous system. So you want to avoid sugar and uh, in increase our vegetables and fruits and grains and be very sure that we get enough of vitamin B. Another factor in eliminating fear is keeping the body in general, all of the body and the nervous system in good shape. And for that reason, we want to do daily exercise. Daily exercise will help us to keep a, a strong, healthy body, will strengthen our self-confidence. And especially exercises that bring more blood to the brain. As you see on the right-hand side down here, a woman with her legs on the wall, a pillow under her buttocks, allowing more blood to come into the brain. And I have found that a combination of vitamins and this head low posture for about 15 to 20 minutes, as long as we don't have any contraindications, any reason for us not to put our head up and not to have a, a higher blood flow to the brain, can often help very much with fears. It's, it's a, Although the fear may be psychological, it seems that the physical condition of the brain plays a good, important role here. And that slow rhythmic breathing in this state will bring more and more oxygen. So some fears can be the result of a tired nervous system, of a tired brain, in which it's not getting enough blood or oxygen or nutrients or, or enough uh, special vitamins such as vitamin B. Now, another way of dealing with fear is to separate ourselves from it and to realize that it is something separate from us, that we are a consciousness in this body and that our fear is a small part of our personality which has a certain belief which says that it is in danger from something. But we are not that. We are the witnessing consciousness. And we can create greater separation between ourselves as consciousness and the part of us which is fearing for example, by writing a letter to it. And you can write a letter to your fear, explaining how you feel. It should not be a condemning letter or an antagonistic letter. It should be a loving letter because that part of ourselves that fears is not to blame. It's, it's a child within us. It's, it's misunderstanding some aspects of reality. And we can write a letter to that or we can write a dialogue. And that is that we write to the fear and then we write on behalf of the fear to ourselves and then back to the fear uh, and you can go back and forth. So either we can write a letter to the fear or a conversation between the fear and itself. And then we begin to understand as we're walking around, as we're approaching life, that we are not this part that is fear. We are separate from it. We are the consciousness which is aware of the birth of this fear and also if it's gradual uh, letting go. And another way would be to 